activities with Dr. Betsy Sherman. Part of this grant included some classrooms putting together projects for a science fair. We hope you enjoy our program of science fair activities. Can you tell us your name, please? Yolanda Scott. And what class are you in, Yolanda? This is What is this model right here, Yolanda? Mount Anthony Mountain. You mean the mountain that's way over there? That's way in back of the school? Okay. And how high is Mount Anthony? 2,340 feet. That's pretty big, isn't it? Yes. How long did it take you guys, your class, to make this entire model? One month. One month? And what month was that? What month was that? March. March. Ah, I see. Well, thank you very much, Leanda. Hi, can you tell me your names, please? Jory, Kaya. And what class are you guys in? First, Mrs. First grade, Miss Matt class. Okay. See that big thing way up there on the wall? What is that, Jory? David's father. David's father. That's a pretty big father, don't you think? And Kyle, Kyle, how did you make that? Painted it and traced it. You painted and traced it. I bet you worked with Mrs. Thurber in art, didn't you? Thanks, guys. Hi, can you tell me your name? I'm David Wood. And what class are you in, David? Mrs. Bartlett. David, can you tell me what this table and what is all on this table up here? All of these right here are all the bean seeds that we did. Number one, we all took a paper towel and we wet it with a certain kind of water and we put it in, we put it in bean sprouts on top of it, five bean sprouts, and we put it in a cover on it so it would keep going up and down. And some of them already have sprouts. Number one and two is neutral, and all five have sprouts. Three, four are base, but are all rotten and black and yucky. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all acids, with a different kind of acids with vinegar. Six is that, the five is acid one to one. Six is acid one to two, that's different, smaller levels. At seven is acid one to three, a smaller level than that, the six. Eight is acid one to four, smaller than acid one to three. And number nine is the, the weakest acid. Thank you very much, David. That was a great job. And this is water with, this was water with acid one to one. I said, what's two? Of course, I really can't get this out because yeah. this is acid one to three, acid one to four, neutral, and this one's water with base. And here we have coleus plants. Some of them in our first experiment, which I don't know what, which ones are the front of the map, they all died in the first experiment of the acid. And only a few of the bases died. Acid uh, neutrals died. A, a few bases died and shrunk. The bubble was pulled out. And all the new coleus plants, three of them uh, were dead, and only two of them survived with the acid. And they're, and they're still coming up, I think. Still going. All set? Thank you, David. Hi, can you tell me your names, please? Heather Golden, Kara Hubert, Jesse Torres. And what class are you in? This is Bartlett's third grade. This is Bartlett's third grade. Jesse, can you tell me a little about a little bit about that poster up there, the water cycle? Well, um, we drew the picture of the mountains and with the ocean, the streams in the river, and how the water cycle goes. Um, when the water, when the rain falls, it goes down the streams and rivers and goes into the ocean. Then it evaporates up into the clouds and then the, the water condenses in the clouds and it forms rain and then it, and then it um, goes out of the clouds and back into to the lakes and streams and oceans and then it and then it evaporates again and then keeps going around. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. Kara and Heather, you're going to talk about the acid rain cycle? Okay, let's start with Kara. Um, we drew a picture 
of all the acid, like the things that cause acid rain, and we put like the factories and all the pollution that goes into the ponds and the rivers, and then we did one with the um, factories, the pollution of the smokestacks, and we did um, one of the cars, how they um, pollute because of the exhaust, and, and so that in the water, like all the stuff that people pollute with, they throw that in the lakes and stuff, and it, and so then all the animals that are swimming or anything in the water, they can't live because of the stuff that's in there, it pollutes and stuff. Um, I can't think of anything else. She took all my things. Okay, well, okay, thank you very much. Hockey, can you tell me your name, please? Samantha. Samantha, and what class are you in, Samantha? Grade three. Grade three, Mrs. Gruber's? Yes. All right, great. Can you tell me a little about a little bit about this? And we did our plan. And we had to do, we started off with <laughs> petri dishes. We put paper towel in. We put our beans in. And then we watered them. And after a few weeks, we saw these got mold. And they started to grow a little. And these ones grew, but the acid ones didn't because we put <coughs> water and vinegar in. And with the plants, we did um, baking soda and water. And these, were, these two were living. This one was dying a little, but this one started growing and these died. And for these, we... Um, we made a mistake, and we put baking soda water into this plant. And well, then we asked, then we put um, water in, and the acids were good growing, but after a few days, they died. You can see on the chart that these died after three weeks. And this is. This is an exhibit about what acid rain does to your plants, correct? Yes. Thank you, Sam. Hi, can you tell me your name? My name is Joe Thomas. And Joe, what class are you in? Uh, third. Are you in Mrs. White's class? Uh -huh. Joe, can you tell me what these things are right here? Um, they're a type of, they're isopods and um, they um, live in wet gravel and um, we, we have to wet them with acid rain and pH water and um, I forget the other thing there. They, so they live in acid rain, correct? Okay. Can you tell me your name, please? Michael Lamprin. And Mike, what would you like to tell me about today? The bean seeds. The bean seeds. Where are the bean seeds? Um, ours just are upstairs. Ah, yours are upstairs. Okay, well, that's all right. Well, can you tell me something about those bean seeds? Well, they... At first, they were little beans, and then after we put them on a towel in the um, little, like, clear thing, and you could see them. Is that called a Petri dish? Yes, and you can watch them grow, and you could see them, like, sprout and get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can see the little roots going into the napkin. Did you have to put any acid or any base on that? another and then pure water on them. Okay, what about the acid? What happened to the beans uh, the, the beans that were um, that had acid on them? Well, they 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 didn't grow as well as the pure water. I see. Thank you, Michael. Hi, can you tell me your name, please? Whitney. And you? Lisa. And what is this exhibit all about today, Whitney? It's about um, weighing. About weight? You mean how many, how uh, things are weighed? Yep. And how heavy they are? Yep. And how heavy are these paper clips? Um, kind of light. light. They're pretty light. So what is this thing in front of Lisa here? Um, a weight. It's a weight? Or is it called a scale? Ah, it's a scale. And what does the scale do? Um, it weighs the 
What have you been weighing today? We've been weighing like little things. We've been weighing this stuff, earth, and um, we have like these all different things. And we have some of those. We have um, a wooden apple and we have oil, vinegar, sugar, crushed Cheerios and Cheerios. I see, that's very interesting. What about this little scale right here? Can you tell me about that? It's like a math thing. It's not really, it's just a little math thing that you can play with. Could you demonstrate how that works for me? You put like stuff on here and see if you try to get it the same, if you gotta put more on. Okay, so you have a 10 on this side and a 6 and a 4 on this side. So it means 6 plus 4 equals 10? You got to add it up and stuff. What if I were to take off the 4? Um, it would go. So that means the 10 is heavier than the 6, right? All right, thank you, Whitney. Well, we're back with Lisa Allen and Whitney Lacrosse. And you want to tell us about something else? Yes. About the graphs up on the wall. What about those graphs? Um, we have weighed some stuff and um, we want to share it with you. What kind of stuff did you weigh? We weighed like oil and them stuff over there. We weighed those. What are those? The, the weights. Those are weights and as I can see down here, the brown ones are 20 grams. The orange ones are 10 grams, the yellow ones are 5 grams, and the blue ones are 1 gram? How did you weigh those? Um, we used a scale. Used a scale, and then you put the results up on the graph? Yes. And is there anything special about the graphs that you can tell us? Well, we take a guess. Then we see if it's right and if it's not right, then we put it on actual, and we see, then we weigh it, and then we put how much it weighs. Thank you very much, ladies. Okay, could you tell me your names, please? Casey Conklin, Lindsay Lashon. And what is this exhibit about? It's about heat energy units. Heat energy units. Now, I don't understand that. Can you tell me what that is? Well, our um, hypothesis is to see if we can melt ice faster in cold water than in hot water. I see, it's very interesting. Lindsay, what can you tell me about this? <laughs> um, we, if you melt ice faster in cold water, you have to have uh, more heat energy units than in the warm water. Ah, I see. You know what I do when I have to make ice? Instead of putting cold water in the ice tray, I put hot water in the ice tray. Is that the way to do it? Um, Mrs. King says um, it melts faster if it's with warm water that you put in the freezer. I see. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me about this? Um, we've been working on it for two weeks now, and some of the kids in our class have not yet get a, got it, and it's very funny because they don't understand it yet. Uh, but some people in our class have got it so good, it's just like a click of a finger. So you understand it pretty well. Can, can you? Would you be able to teach them how this works? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Can you tell me your name? Adam. Adam Bump. And you're from whose class? Mr. Mianix. Adam, what is this table? What's it all about? Well, this is one of the straw houses they used to build back in the olden days, and it's the hay is one of the best insulators to keep hot air in, cold air in. Okay, would this, do you think this, this hay and this straw would have been a good insulator for this past winter? Yeah. What about, what about fiberglass in insulation? Did you do anything with fiberglass? No. So it's just straw. And you found out that straw was pretty good, wasn't it? Yep. Now how did you test that? How did you find out that it was a really good insulator? Well, we put an ice cube in like straws. I think it's Right here. That's either straw or hay. And um, 
we put an ice cube and we took it up to the old gym and it'll, every half hour we'd go up to check it and write it, record it. Okay, did a lot of people guess on that survey over there, did they guess straw as the best insulator? You're the only one. I'm the only one, well look at that, boy I can't believe that. Well thank you Adam. CAC TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAC TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.